follow that? Persona non grata. Huh? Persona non grata. Means unwelcome, an unwelcome person. Huh? Like, no, like uh, persona non gracia. Huh? In Spanish, yeah. Yeah, not welcome, unwelcome. Persona non grata. It's Latin, of course. Um, so, Raivataka Mountain is a beautiful mountain in the heavenly regions. Uh, and there's, there's also, I think there's a Raivataka Hill in India someplace. Anyway, it's full of beautiful flowers in the springtime. But she's saying that if her uh, co-wife is getting more praise from Krishna than she is, even though she's Rukmini, she's Krishna's first wife, see? If, uh, uh, yeah, no, sorry, got it backwards. Satya Bhama was Krishna's second wife, and she was feeling slighted by Rukmini's high position, that Krishna was showing more consideration for Rukmini. Uh, so she was saying, well, you know, this mountain may be full of beautiful flowers, but what's the use of me looking at them? They don't give me any pleasure because I don't have, you know, I don't have uh, your interest. I'm feeling, feeling like I'm not even wanted around here. Persona non grata. It's an instance of, uh, also an instance of uh, feminine exaggeration. <laughs> 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 There's a, there's a song, there's actually a very beautiful um, bossa nova song called Useless Landscape. Anybody can look it up. It's about this feeling. Concealment. There is a symptom of ecstatic love known as concealment or trying to hide one's real mental condition by externally showing another attitude. In this state of mind, one tries to hide his mind by looking away in different directions, by unnecessarily trying for something which is impossible, or by using words which cover one's real thoughts. According to Acharyas, expert in the study of psychological activities, these attempts at hiding one's real affections are another part of ecstatic feelings for Krishna. Interesting, huh? In the 10th canto, 32nd chapter, verse 15 of Srimad Bhagavatam, Shukadeva Goswami states, My dear king, the gopis were always beautiful and decorated with confidential smiles and alluring garments. In their movements, intended to give impetus to lusty feelings, they would sometimes press Krishna's hand on their laps, and sometimes they would keep his lotus feet on their breasts. After doing this, they would talk with Krishna as if they were very angry with him. This is another instance, or there is another instance of this concealment in ecstatic love. When Krishna, the supreme joker, planted the Parijata tree in the courtyard of Satyabhama, Rukmini, the daughter of King Vidarbha, became very angry. But due to her natural gentle behavior, she did not express anything. No one could understand Rukmini's real mental condition. This is an instance of competitive concealment. You bet. There is another instance in the first canto, 11th chapter, verse 32 of Srimad Bhagavatam. After entering Dwarka, Krishna was received in different ways by different members of his family. Upon seeing their husband from a distance, the queens of Dwarka immediately embraced him within their minds and slowly glanced over him. As Krishna came nearer, they pushed their sons forward to embrace him. Others were trying out of shyness not to shed tears, but still they could not keep the tears from gliding down. This is an instance of concealment caused by shyness. On another occasion, when Srimati Radharani thought that Krishna was involved with another woman, she addressed her friend in this manner. 
My dear friend, as soon as I think of Krishna, the cowherd boy, attached to some other woman, I become stricken with fear, and the hairs of my body stand up. I must be very careful that Krishna does not see me at such times. This is an instance of concealment caused by shyness and diplomatic behavior. It has been stated, although Srimati Radharani developed a deep loving affection for Krishna, she hid her attitude in the core of her heart so that others could not detect her actual condition. This is an instance of concealment caused by gentleness. She didn't want to cause distress to her family members. So she tried at all times to hide this attraction. Once when Krishna and his cowherd friends were enjoying friendly conversation, Krishna began to address his associates in casual language. At that time, Krishna's servant Patri was also enjoying the conversation. But then remembering his position of servitude, Patri bowed down before his master and with great respect and control, he stifled his smiling. This subdued smiling is an instance of concealment caused by a respectful attitude. See the difference between a servant and a friend? Uh, Krishna started uh, using joking words. Uh, talking very casually means he was talking very informally and joking. Uh, and his friends, his cowherd boyfriends, were probably joking and and, you know, remarking, making casual remarks back to him. Uh, in, in Sanskrit and in, in Indian society, or and especially in Indian family life, there is a distinction between equals and superiors and subordinates, so, such that one does not use joking words before one's superiors. Uh, and generally, uh, one does not use uh, casual talk even in front of subordinates. That when a subordinate is present, generally one will maintain gravity and not express uh, light feelings. Uh, this is only done in the presence of equals. So Krishna was predominantly surrounded by equals, cowherd boys. And uh, when he began joking and talking in a light way, then uh, was his servant's name? Patri. Patri, Patri uh, you know, he, at first he was enjoying it, like, ha, 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 Krishna, and then, uh oh, I'm a servant. I shouldn't be enjoying like a friend. So he bowed down and he, he forced himself to be controlled, to conceal his, his real feeling, even though he was enjoying the talk very much. So, see, in, in the West, we don't have this. We have this idea that everybody should be equal, artificially equal. But people aren't equal. Is anybody equal to anybody else? We're all individuals. We all have different, different qualities and things. Um, and as, in social roles, people who are older and more experienced are considered very respectable in Indian society, even to this day. Uh, this persists. You'll see when we're in India. Uh, actually, you can see you can see it if when we were at the festival, how some of the Indians would behave around me. They would not not look directly. They would look down a little bit and talk in a very formal way, and like this. Um, I think sometimes they overdid it a little bit, because my my mood is not so formal anyway. You know. But uh, this attitude of dealing respectfully with superiors is so deeply ingrained due to family training. In a good family, they will get uh, this kind of training very early in life, from very early. And I also had this attitude. When I was young, I, I never argued with my parents, even though I disagreed with them probably most of the time. <laughs> I didn't ever argue with them because they were my parents, and I owed them some respect. Of course, as soon as I was out of their sight, I did whatever I wanted. But the point is, I would never offer them a, uh, a disrespectful attitude. And I think this is good. I think this is very important. 
On the other hand, uh, especially a disciple should always be open and honest with the spiritual master. Because otherwise, how am I going to help you? <clears throat> especially if there's some problem, you should always come to me and tell me. And we can discuss it, you know, privately or whatever. Because if it goes on for too long, it's going to become harder to deal with. So, see, this, this respectful attitude doesn't mean that you're dishonest or withholding. It means that a person, uh, when, when they're before a superior, that they don't give a, a, a disrespectful attitude. Really, that's the main thing. I, I think it's important to respect everybody. I think every, everyone should be 